What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. This is day 341, making Songbringer. And uh, today I'm going to be working on roads. What's up, Zilton? How's it going, man? Okay, so this is the first day I've even been able to work on the game since last Thursday. So, um, I gotta get things going again. I gotta get the flow flowing here. Alright, we don't need to be in the world scene just yet. Actually, it probably is a good idea to be here in the world scene. So, what's up, Arcane? So today's goal is to make it so um, the there are roads, pathways, which subtly guide the player towards interesting things. This is not, not going to be like an obvious thing at all, uh, but yeah, it will be, it'll be kind of um, like a subtle guide for the player. Yeah, yeah, it's been since last Thursday since I've been able to stream. Um, just had another death in my family, so my my grandpa went and passed he passed away. So uh, it's been a long, emotionally ringing kind of weekend. So that's I'm just I'm kind of out of it and trying to get back here into the game development here. Um. So yeah, um, we need a data structure to hold those paths. Uh, inside the maze. Let's see, um, there's distances, it's an int pointer, sections are an int pointer. I guess I want to do, uh, it's like data, we have unsigned car for data. I guess unsigned car could work too, or just uint, I'll do uint 18. Uh, pointer, and this is going to be uh, either pathways or roads. Let's call it pathways. Uh, and we're going to need some functions and stuff. Hi, Gates. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for saying that, man. Really, really appreciate that. It's always, it's always good to remember that what I'm doing is, is helping people out there so appreciate you saying that man um, okay so we need some functions to be able to check if if a pathway is open and also to set if a if a pathway um, these are all gonna be style squared so set flag has flag nearby flag get distance difficulty yeah Put it here next to di get difficulty. This is going to be bool. Um, has pathways squared. And we'll take an x2 and a y2. What's up, Lighter Thief? It's going good, man. How are you doing? So yeah, we got has pathway, and then we need a set pathway. Void set pathway, set pathway squared. Uh -huh. <clears throat> And uh, this is like, it takes a direction. So yeah, we got the, the, the quadrant number and the direction it faces to set that as a pathway that's open in that quadrant. So I think that's all the functions and stuff we need to do to add to the header. So let me start writing the functions and stuff, implementing all this. Uh, we'll like we'll mimic what distances is doing. 
So it'll be pathways, null, uh, if pathways, delete pathways. And uh, creating the pathways array. Finally getting a warmer there, nice. Do I want the translation before a certain date? No. In fact, the longer you wait, it's probably better at this point because um, there's a lot of story to be written right now. I'm, I'm starting story and things like that at this point, and, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, yeah, if you, if you ended up translating it right now, you would, there would just be so much more stuff to retranslate later once all the story's written, so it's probably just best to wait on it, yeah, thanks, man, thanks for, thanks for translating. Pathways. All right. And then we need to zero all the pathways. Well, hold on a second. Was that? Is that right? From I to data size, data size, plot size. No, it's data size because it's squared. Yeah, all right. Next up, we got some get distance squared, set distance squared. This is, these are pretty good models for how we can do pathways. Is Songreer open for translation? Uh, I mean, yeah. If you if you want to help translate, um, I don't think there's anyone translating to Czech right now. That would that would be nice. And uh, before I was just rewarding people with um, with Steam keys for that. Uh, but at this point, you already have the Steam key, so it would kind of be your own thing. If you wanna if you wanna if you wanna give that to the project or whatever, you would just basically. Uh, you know, <clears throat> yeah, it totally is. It's a very exciting part of the project. What's up, T? Apologies, everybody. I'm kind of out of it today. I'm just, uh, um, I had another, my, my grandpa passed away this weekend and he was, I was very fond of him. I miss him quite, quite a lot. So, um, it was just like, you know, one of those weekends I had to go travel and, uh, and you know, go to the go to the celebration of his life and all that. So I'm, I'm still trying to get back into you know the game dev here, and it's uh, I don't know. It's, I didn't really get much rest this weekend. Let's just say that. So I'm not very energetic right now. Uh, so yeah, we're working on roads. These are roads. These are going to be some. Um, uh, little pathways on the overworld that um, uh, that that guide the player basically. Sud it's a subtle thing that guides the player. It's not something that's obvious. It's like the crow. The crow in the game guides you to something cool. Um, you know, I'm not gonna say what that is or anything, but like um, the pathways also will guide you to cool stuff. Yeah, thanks. It's yeah, thanks. It's that's. Thanks for saying that. Um, uh, is, what, was the, what was the name of this function? No, is, is pathway? I, I forget what. Uh, what was it again? So there's set. Pathway squared. And there was what's has pathway squared has pathway. 
Pat. Oh, this takes this returns a bool. Has pathway squared. Pathways is null. We just return false. Doesn't have that pass pathway. What's up, Rocket Bunny? Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we go. Return pathways. Let's get offset squared. Yeah. All right, now set pathway squared. <laughs> uh, maze set pathway is it was it pathways why isn't it like this function oh it's not a const shoot gotta recompile that Set pathway square it should be okay now. Pathways i equals uh, there's a function at the top get mask for a direction. Get mask 3D. And I guess I should be or equals. All right, cool. Translating the check. Nice, right on. Yeah, yeah, cool. I understand. Thanks, Arcane. You should restart this PC someday this month. All right, that should be. Let's let's review everything. Make sure we did all the right hookings ups. This is all hooked up, the pathways. We were deleting it. We were, we were um, newing it. Zeroing it. Getting it. Pathways is null, return false. And pathways setting it, pathways offset, get mask. All right, set pathway. That looks good. Wiz, why did you pick to learn C instead of C sharp or Java? When I learned to make games, we didn't have C sharp, and Java was not a popular language for making video games. Um, so the obvious choice for making video games back in the day, this is the early 90s, was C. Um, C, C++ kind of became more popular. Once we, once we had C++ version 98 in 1998, it got, to be, it got to be a little bit better, a little bit more pro. And C++ then became kind of like a, I don't know, the language to be using. I don't know, C++ was always popular for game developers and everything. The problem the problem with C Sharp is that it's uh, slow to run. It's not as fast as C++. Same thing with Java. It's a slow language. Both these languages are amazing languages. I'm not trying to knock them. I'm just, but they are um, not as fast as C++, and they're also not as portable. Um, because C Sharp is, you know, written by Microsoft and all that, uh, it only... It, the, there's only so many compilers out there written for it, and be, and because it's newer, there's only so many compilers. So, uh, um, like for example, if you wrote your game in C sharp, 
and you wanted to go compile all that code that's written in C-sharp for iOS, you're going to be probably be hard struck to find a compiler even because the compiler is not written for iOS C-sharp. Same kind of thing are with Java. Java only compiles on certain platforms. But C and C++ are the most portable languages out there. There are so many compilers written for almost every freaking platform out there. So it becomes one of those languages where if you write your game in C and C++, you have a, a very much of an easier time porting your game because you don't have to rewrite code. Yeah, mo see, Mono Game is also a great framework, but the big caveat to Mono Game is also that it it, it sure it is multi OS, but it's not all OS. Let's say you are, write your game um, in C sharp, you write it with Mono Game, and then you want to um, you want to port it for Xbox One, for example, or not Xbox One. That's a bad example, but a console that doesn't support C sharp. What are you? What do you do then? For example, the guy that created um, Axiom Verge, uh, Thomas Happ, one of my heroes. I think he's an amazing creator. He does all his own art, all his own music, and his own programming. He wrote he wrote Axiom Verge with Mono Game, and he's still struggling trying to get the game ported for the PS Vita because the Vita doesn't show, support C Sharp yet, or maybe it does now. Maybe he finally got it working, but I don't know. What's up, salad dogs? All right, so we got a pathway, squared, set pathway, has pathway, and I was checking through to make sure all the fun, yeah, everything should be hooked up now. Um, I should be able to run the game and nothing should have changed. Yeah, and they're managed languages, right? And they have garbage collection. Which is which is great great in some you know some cases, but also bad in some other cases. Like you don't want a garbage collected language for typically for games because you want to do your own memory management because it's faster basically, and you're a good programmer anyway. So why why do you need why do you need garbage collection if you're doing if you're doing your cleanup duties with with code. Uh, all right, so I'm running it 60, and that's causing the fan to kick in. So I'm gonna turn that down to 30. Um, all right, now so now that everything is still running fine, I want to start to place a pathway. So from the home screen to level one, I want there to be sort of like a worn-in trail slash road that goes there. It's a subtle guide. It shows you where Dungeon 1 is. All right, Ziltoon, thanks, man. Thanks for trying that. So that's going to require A star pathfinding. I've already got the breadth first part of A star written. Everything is actually most of the A star is already done. I just need to rework some of the code, but for now, before I go and just try and create the A star part of it, I want to just simply place a road, a simple short little road, and then go into the game and actually draw the artwork for the road and everything and, and do that first before I do the A star part. Sometimes Steams like to stop my downloads and I force them to resume. Yeah, I, I really I, I have a feeling it's that, uh, but we'll see. If if you don't if you leave it alone while it downloads, that'll really help us narrow it down, you know, and be like, all right, was this corrupt data or is this actually a bug in the game? I'm thinking it's corrupt data. Uh, no, I haven't played Hyperlight Drifter. Is it out now? I've been really looking forward to Hyperlight Drifter for a long time. Did they finally release it? Nice, they did. 
I'm not even sure if this got on my wish list yet. Oh, it didn't because I didn't see when they finally released it on Steam. One of the best looking games of the century, I'm telling you. Hyper Light Drifter is, I've been waiting for this game for a long time. I'm glad they finally finished it and everything. Really looking forward to seeing what this game has to offer. I'm sure it's going to be fun. Maybe I'll start playing that sometime soon. All right. <clears throat> it's an issue of personal taste overall. Personally, if I'm going to use a managed language, I might as well use Unity. Yeah. Or any of the, those others. Yes, definitely Salad Dogs for sure. It's really difficult, huh? Oh. Uh, you, me, sorry, no, I have not fixed my bandwidth. Uh, really, it's up to my internet company to do that, and I just haven't, I haven't gone and pestered them again. Uh, like I said earlier in the stream, it's been quite a emotional, crazy weekend for me of not working on the video game. Uh, and I, but yeah, my internet quality is like the least of my priorities at this point. Uh, all right, when the maze has created itself. And it's done. In the generate overworld post, I'm going to go through and place a, a tiny little road. Apparently locked to 30 frames per second. What what's locked at thirty frames a second? <clears throat> so let's place a few roads like set pathway squared. Um let's start from like the top right of the home screen and work our way, I don't know, just into the next screen. So that would be a 14 or a seven shifted up. We'll just do, no, we'll do, uh, yeah, just 14, 15, I guess, actually 15, one north. This is just to hack it in and try it out. So. We got north, and then this one's going to be south. Also 15, this one's 2. Okay, so there's now two roads in the game. and But they won't be there yet until we actually create them, create the art for them and all that. So let me turn off the overworld scene. We'll warp ourselves into the world at the beginning. Oh, Hyperlight's locked to 30, huh? Oh. Alright, Lighter Thief, see ya, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's better. It's better. I mean, it's been... The, the brunt of the emotional part of the weekend is over. So, you know, I had a lot of time to think about it all. A lot of, a lot of driving this weekend. I had to, you know, drive up to my family's and about 10 hours away and all that one way. So lots of time to think and just process it all. But yeah, it's it sucks to lose someone that you really are fond of. You know what I mean? I've I've lost family members before, and not not to say that they I wasn't fond of those family members, but when you're really really fond of someone and then you lose them, it's incredibly difficult. <clears throat> What's up, Boogie? What's up? How you doing? So, yeah, we should have two roads placed there, but we don't have um, 
them drawn yet. So now, it's, now the next thing is to draw them. So I'm imagining there will be a road right here. Just a subtle one, some some blocks, some rocks. I like these kind of, these rocks right here. We'll draw some rocks, place them right here along this path. And then we'll the road should come up here onto this screen as well. And I need to make sure that the paths are all good. Yeah, thanks, Sal Dongs. Another corruption, your textures, their textures was don't even load. Yeah, this like I was, like all the other signs that, that you've been reporting there with the bugs, it sounds like a corrupt download. Oh, it's, no worries, Boogie Man. No. Sorry, man. This is probably not a good day for me to even be streaming. You know, I shouldn't I need I need more rest. It's been a very, very emotional weekend and um but yeah, I'm just trying to get back in the swing of things here, you know, get coding again, just get the get the flow flowing with the game, and um, you know, let the past be the past. So yeah, the the pathways are all fine. These these white O's represent a pathway that you can walk along. The red X's are where you can't, and so yeah, it's this this should work out fine. So then I can place a road here along this open path here and then also place some road right here along this open path wait so Zilton you've already tried deleting it and reinstalling it huh but did you did you mess with it did you pause and resume it the second time you try to install it I think there's already some code which places some rocks and I think that's in in the um, in the mountain areas though can we straw pull what to make the trail out of uh, I mean what do you just want to suggest some stuff how about we just start with some suggestions if if you have some Yeah, you can see there's some rocks here on the ground, so I can start using these to create the path. Yeah, these are only in the in the um, the mountain areas right now, but we'll start using those with the colors and everything. So I can turn off show paths. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Dead twigs, rotten leaves, and bugs. That's cool. It's definitely cool, but it's it kind of defeats the purpose of uh, having a pathway if it's not really ob like a a natural roadway type thing. So that's why I'm going to start with with stones at first. I mean, I'm sure we could, I could change this later to be dead twigs. Yes, the different opacities do represent. Um, Quadrants actually not really a pathfinding score, but a quadrants It's all kind of messed up. Actually. It's not really that I'm kind of confused by it myself. I need to really clarify that but for for the, the over The most important part of that was that the white O's are simply just the open path uh, So in area I think there's a function which is called like something rocks. Create rocks, here it is. Yeah, create rocks returns if it's not style mountain. Yeah, we're gonna need to do this in a different, different function. So we gotta create rocks, but also we need another function like create pathways. Let's 
So we'll get that compiling. Uh, yeah. So void area, create pathways. Now, pathways for now are only going to be on the overworld. So, so return if it's not the overworld. The grocery store by my apartment just started selling American junk food. Oh, junk food? My God, does it taste good? You spent 50 euros on candy? <laughs> Awesome, Rocket Money. This is great, man. 50 euros. <laughs> you must have got like the mother load of all candy hauls. So let me pseudocode this out. Like, we're going to loop over. Loop over all tiles on the screen. If the tile is an open path and is and has a maze pathway, Draw some rocks. That's awesome. So we're going to go this for each tile. Anything that's K tile none is a potential for having a roadway. So we want to capture this in this function, take an int x, int y. All right, so if this is an exit path, or wait a minute, is it, is it exit path or open path? There's two of these, is exit path. No, not it, not it, not that, not his exit path. It's going to be his open path. And yeah, his open math path does work with centering. So that's going to be okay. It's open. At this exact tile location. Including the interior, yeah. And do we have see there's a trick to this uh, that basically some paths are centered. So there's only two paths that can go north and the two quadrants to the north, right? There's northwest, there's northeast. And if there's only a northeast, that counts as a centered path. So this is going to be have to be tricky like that. But at first, at first we'll just do um, we won't, worry, we won't even worry about that. Your first attempt at Blender. Hey. That's cool, Rocket Bunny. I like it. It's really simple. Yeah, I agree. It has a nice retro arcade look. I agree with Salad Dongs there. Capture the maze.
world get maze. Well, this is a take the address of that. Capture the maze pointer. Hmm. We might as well bail if this is an invalid maze. So maze pointer is null, or the maze. What the hell is the okay. size x? Return What's up Pedro? Welcome in. Hello. Draw rocks on pathways. All right, so that and if maze pointer has pathway squared. Oh, we need we need the x two y two, so we need to know the quadrant. Quadrant is, uh, is there some kind of get quadrant function from area? Quad. There is a get quadrant. The tile pause, this get, oh, there's two get quadrants. Get quadrant x, y. Yeah, great. We already have a get quadrant function. Oh, happy day! Auto queue this gay quadrant for this position x y. Now we have x two y two. Uh, this is going to be add to quad quadrant starting with x y area pause dot x area pause dot y. Adding quadrant Q, putting it into x2, y2. Now we've got the x2, y2, and we can determine if it has a pathway there. Once again, this isn't going to work perfectly accurately because it's not taking into account centering the north path if it's only northeast. But Let's just put a rock here anyways for now, and we'll figure out how to make it perfect later. So let's get some color. Oh, I doubt I doubt we need that anymore. Let's check here. What about an iridescent path or crystal-like stepping stones? That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, once this code's in place, I can change the art to be anything, so maybe we'll play with that. The game finally works. Awesome, Zilton. See, I told you it was a corrupt download. So just confirm for me, the second time that you downloaded, re-downloaded the game, did you pause and resume it? And now this, and so I'm, I'm making an assumption here. I hope that, let's see if this is like, I guess I'm trying to make an assertion here. Um, in that basically the second time you downloaded, you paused and resumed. So maybe that had something to do with how the, get, the data got corrupted. And the third time you let it totally download without pausing. Is that true? Uh, Rocket Bunny, yes, on, on Windows I use Visual Studio. Here on here on Mac I'm using Xcode and on Linux I don't need to use any IDE. It would be nice if I had an IDE, but I don't for Linux. So I just use 
the command line and that's all I need on Linux actually just command line command line GDB command line um, Vim okay so we're gonna get a color mix of the rock and its position so we need the position auto P is this get tile pause given the XY pause so we're getting the tiles position getting a color mix desaturating it a little bit we're pushing back a new entity uh, we also need an R so we'll do int R this get ran one for x y and that should be all let's we'll see if this even looks anywhere near right do you know how to make an exe of a c++ project yes once you've got your c++ project set up in visual studio you just build it's very similar here to how I do this in Xcode. I go product build. And what building does is it compiles it. And then, yeah, once you're compiled, you've got an EXE. In Visual Studio, the way it works is they uh, it places your files for the, what you've built inside. So if I go to my projects, Windows, oh, actually, let's go to Boot Camp and I'll show you my actual Windows files. For the last time I built Songbringer. Or is it users? No, not, not Windows. Users at desktop songbringer projects Windows. So once you've built it in Visual Studio, you'll have this folder called either release or debug dot something. If you're if you're using Win32, it'll be release.win32. If you're using x64, I think it's release.x64, I'm not sure. But anyways, you just go into that that directory. And all you really need to run your game is the exe and any data files you need for the game. Your obj files you don't need. You don't need to distribute these in, in any re, any case. Uh, yes, Rocket Money. Really, that's all you do. You just build. All right, we got nothing. Either that or I put the rocks underneath, which might have happened. Hmm. So that that didn't do anything. Let's see if it's if it was the open pathway or if it was the has pathway squared. Ah, oh, okay, so it wasn't that, it probably wasn't the has pathway because we should be seeing a whole quadrant full of rocks in this northeast and this one's south east. Maybe it put it somewhere else, maybe. Oh no! Duh, I haven't even called this create pathways function. <laughs> All right, let's do that, huh? Let's let's do it. Let's talk, let's actually call this function. Sounds good. Create dirt one ground. I think this is appropriate place to put that. Create pathways. Welcome newest followers. Sil Silicon Blob Fushi. Ernst Gernst and Mati. All right. Well, we still don't have anything. And there's nothing around the nearby areas either. Okay. Why is that? Let's go into create pathways. We'll set a breakpoint. 
Should be getting it and all that. Should be getting to at least to this. And good. We're getting into this function. Oh. <laughs> Man, I really am out of it today. It's supposed to be not equal. All right, right, so now that should be fine. Yeah, we're getting into the function. Let's see if we got some rocks on the ground. No, we don't. Something's still wrong, so maybe it's... Maybe it's the has pathway squared. Let's come out on everything. Put the pathways everywhere. Zilton, you got Zilton got points. Massey, what's up? How many lines of code? Let's see. I think it's like fifty four. Yeah, we're getting close to fifty five thousand lines of code. There's this metric that you have one bug per thousand lines, no matter how good you are. I would agree with that. How many bugs do I have just listed? I haven't even written down all, all the latest bugs. But let's see what we got for bugs. Seventy code bugs. Seven art bugs, twenty-eight design. Not really bug. These design and art ones aren't really bugs necessarily, but they're things that I have to do, implement, which will eventually cause bugs. These are we, these will be future bugs here. So we're talking like a hundred bugs at this point. And if I have fifty-five thousand lines of code and a hundred bugs, which is probably a low estimate. Fifty-five thousand divided by a hundred. No wait. What was it again? Divide by one bug per thousand lines. That would mean I would I would only have fifty-five bugs. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty. It's pretty reasonable, right? Yeah. Zilton, it would be interesting if there were special seeds which affected gameplay. There will be. There will be. Um, that's kind of like an Easter egg type thing. Yeah, one to a thousand. Yeah. Sorry, man. I'm having a real slow, slow mental day here. Very rough weekend. Okay, so this didn't draw anything. Did it? Let's run this one more time. We should see some rocks on the ground. Nothing, still nothing. Okay, are we ge even getting any of this? Does this, this function ever even be, get called? Yeah, so if you're just joining the stream, I'm working on pathways today. These are supposed to su be subtle guides for the player towards interesting stuff. Like level one, for example, there's a roadway. And the, the reasoning here is this is an ancient planet. There was, a, there was a war on this planet thousands of years ago. There's a lot of history to this planet. So of course there's roads, there's pathways that people have used before. And these will either be like dirt pathways or stone pathways or maybe cool pathways like um, like, uh, what were you talking about? Crystal or iridescent things Mutinous was saying? You know, something like that. Do I have any experience with martial arts? Uh, a little with, but not with Krav Maga. 
Krav Maga is the, the Israeli one, right? All right, yeah, we're getting into this function. Creating this, where is this, what is this position is putting it at? 210, 36, that's fine. The color should also be fine. As long as it's not black, we should see, well, we should still see it even if it is black. But yeah, the color's fine. It's just pushing back a new render. Oh, it does need this other line right here. It needs to set the position because we're never ever using it. Oh, and you know what? I think all it needs is a P right here because that can set the position when it's, called, when it's created. Moth Teeth. Glad to catch you live. Nice, man. You looking forward to playing the game? Thank you, man. Hey, check it out. Finally, we have some rocks. All right, and if I were to like run around, they should be yellowish rocks. Yeah, they're slightly yellowish here in the sand. Okay, cool. Now let's let's um let's make these part of the pathways, not just everywhere. So let's see if this original code I wrote here works. Like I said, it's not going to work for the centered north or east west paths, but we'll we'll see if this kind of works. Damn, well, we should have seen some rocks right here and here. So some part of this isn't working. Let's see which one. It's probably this one. Yes, Moth Teeth, I'm still using Coco Studio X. I would never ever switch my game engine in the middle of a project. So now it's placing it everywhere. So it looks like it was, the, the, yeah, the problem is the pathways have not been set up right. All right, I'm going to see now if the X2, Y2 part is perhaps what's wrong. Or if it's the has pathway squared, which it should have a path, but only on this screen. This is tile number 10, three. After this add quadrant, we should have x2, y2, seven, zero. Oh, that's wrong. No wonder. All right, I got, got this now. This just needs to be um, squared. Duh. All right, so now hopefully that works with the maze pointer has pathway squared. We should see only two pieces of this path that work so far.
Right. Good. So we got some, some pathway here. Even though this is kind of like covering the whole quadrant, we'll fix that. The point is that really we really what I want to see is a pathway starting about here and going to the north. And then it continues here centered on this screen. And then perhaps it would go this way and over to here. And then like work its way over here to the middle and then up here. Basically working you working its way upward, upward, upward towards level one, which is over here. Your subtle guide. Hopefully not as not quite as subtle as the crow is. The crow no one has ever ever figured out. So obviously it's too it's too hidden. But um yeah, so these roads should hopefully be not not trying to give away too much, but yet still sort of a guide. Oh, does sound work for you guys? I don't even know if sound's working. That should probably help. Okay, so the next step is to get it looking right. Does the pathway looking right on any given screen? You always thought the crow was just decoration? Yeah, he's he's not. He's actually not just decoration. So right, yeah, right now he the crow actually guides you to level one. If you just follow the crow, you go to level one. But if but it's I'm gonna change that completely. So right now he's just too hidden for that. So he'll be something else hidden that's awesome. If you follow the crow, it'll lead to something cool. Which I'm not quite sure yet what that's gonna be. Um So yeah, now the challenge is uh, now the challenge is getting the path to look right. And I'm trying to decide how the heck to do that because there's there's a function which shows all the well there's there's a function I can call which shows where an open path is, but obviously you can see I'm calling that already and it's considering all of this open path, which technically it is. I'm kind of mulling over in my mind how how to best do this. It's because the current function is open path is is not fine tuned enough, but I don't I still want to reuse function I still want to reuse the bits of it that it's using, so I don't want to I want to reinvent the wheel here. Hmm. I almost need to think on this one. I think I probably will. This is good though, having this already started. Um, yeah, let me switch gears a minute. While while I'm thinking about the best way to make the pathways more accurate and according to what the what the paths actually are, I'm gonna work on the A star part of it a little bit, or just maybe not work on it, but actually just look at it. So. Might have to call this an early stream today. Um, uh, so yeah, let me look at the, the A star part. I believe that's in maze gen. And I had this, or what I want to do with this is to make it be able to actually use A star. Right now it's using breadth first. 
All right, that's right. It uses a type def location. It uses a priority queue, which is basically just a queue with the highest priority being run first. Here's a heuristic function, even though I'm not using it because there's no really need to measure a heuristic, you just need to measure the distance here. Actually, I guess a heuristic would be good if a math or if a pathway crossed a gate, it really should have a higher weight. So So this is how simple A star is. Really, this is all there is to it. It basically just keeps a priority queue of where to go next. It starts at the start point and starts weighing all the distances and everything. And it loops over the frontier, the priority queue, looking at the back of the priority queue each time. Or, well, I'm not sure whether it's the back or, no, it's the front. And then loops over each direction, check if it's open. And if it is, if a point, if a point at the from the current point to the next point is open, it starts adding the cost and pushes back that new priority function. So this is a breadth first algorithm here. And it's pretty simple to switch this into an A star by pushing back not just the distances, but the pathway. But that is also something I'm going to have to take on at another point. I really got to get going. I'm, uh, like I said, I had a pretty rough weekend. Got to just recover. Got to rest a bunch. So I'm going to have to call it quits for today's stream. Um, but yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to start working on another NPC. So that will be a pretty cool day. Uh, this new NPC will be a random encounter NPC. So as you're as you're going through the world, you'll be able to encounter this NPC and he has kind of plays a, a important role in the game. So uh yeah, so that's it for today's stream. Apologies guys, it's a short stream, but um this is all I got today. So character hype, yes. So yeah, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Hope you guys have a good night and thanks for watching.